I hate running. Even when I was in sports in high school and running and doing sprints was part of the fitness regime, it was never something I really enjoyed. And so if today you ever see me bolt past you at a dead sprint, my advice to you is run. Run for your life because assuredly there is something chasing me. Now the one exception to my dislike for running is my pursuit of God. All Christians are called to partake in the spiritual race and follow Jesus and run after him wholeheartedly. The last quarantine devotions, I challenged husbands to be intentional to care for their wife spiritually, to look after her, to lift her before God, uh, to encourage her in her own relationship with God. Yet, we are all responsible personally to pursue God with everything we are. And we find this in Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In this current time, our life has changed a lot. We're, we're no longer out and about. We're no longer socially involved. We're home so much. <laughs> and there's a lot of things that have just kind of fallen by the wayside. You know, a lot of us, we're starting to get a bit shaggy. Um, maybe you're one of those people who hasn't worn pants in like two weeks. There's a lot of things that we're, we're just starting to kind of let it all hang out. That's understandable, but one place that we can't afford to, be, uh, to become sloppy uh, is in our walk with God, in our, our run as we uh, pursue Him and live for Him. You know, we're made to be in relationship, to be in community, uh, and it's, it's difficult when we're not. Yet the Christian, uh, the Christian race has never been something done in isolation. It can sometimes feel like it's just you and God, yet we're always in community. Even when we can't meet physically, we are part of a broader uh, family of God, a history of God and his people. And if you look back in Hebrews 11, that's that incredible hall of fame, a hall of faith chapter. Even today, when we're so distant from people, we're still surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. You know, those who have gone before and those who are in our, our church body, even though we can't see them, they're there cheering us on. You know, in sports, that's such an important element of the competition is those grandstands filled with friends and family and spectators who are, who are encouraging and cheering on the athletes as they compete. Well, we have that too. It can feel like we're in isolation, but you are not alone. What you are doing, where you're at, what's going on in your life is seen and known by others. Those who have gone before are in the grandstands. They're cheering you on, and because of this, because you're running the race and others are seeing it, do it intentionally. Give it everything you've got. The writer of Hebrews says, to throw off the sin that so easily entangles, to throw away anything that hinders. You know, I love it in sports, there's intentional sports attire. You would never go and, and try to play tennis in jeans and, and a button up shirt like I'm wearing. It would be restrictive, it would hamper your ability to play the game. You know, in the same way as Christians, we need to be intentional about what we have incorporated into our life so that it's enabling us to run after God instead of holding us back. I'll give you an example. Uh, in my own life, some years ago, I, I, I loved playing video games, especially online first-person shooter video games. And 
I was incredibly com competitive about it. I spent hours every day playing. The problem was, or one of the problems, uh, was that I would get very, very worked up and angry and frustrated uh, when things wouldn't go well, when <laughs> the internet would have problems. And my, my temper would cause my mouth to run away with me and I would say things that shouldn't be repeated and, and curse and swear. And, not very nice. Well, about that time, my oldest son started becoming verbal. And wouldn't you know, one of those times where I just flew off the handle and started yelling and screaming, uh, he heard me and he started repeating some of the things I said. And that really woke me up and smacked me over the head and made me realize this wasn't helping me follow God. In fact, this was getting in my way. And, and so I jetsoned that. I, I haven't really played online video games competitively. Uh, or aggressively since that day and that's been an incredible thing because it's allowed me to really clean up my language instead of letting my tongue run away with me. So in your life get rid of the things that are holding you back. Get rid of the things that are stopping you from pursuing God wholeheartedly. Jesus in Matthew 5 29 and 30 says that, and paraphrasing here, but says that if your eye causes you to sin or your hand causes you to sin, you should gouge it out or cut it off. It's better to lose part of your body than your whole body be thrown into hell. And when you look at the parable of the, uh, the sower who throws the seed out onto different types of soil, one of those soils is soil that has weeds in it. And those weeds grow up and they choke out the gospel message. This happens in our life if we're, if we're not intentional about pursuing God and running after him wholeheartedly. So we need to be willing to, to cultivate the soil of our life. So get rid of those things that are hindering you, even if they're good. Pursue God wholeheartedly. Pursue him passionately. And as you do that, keep your eyes fixed on him. You know, he is the one that you are running to. The you know, basic truth is that you go where you look. And that's true in their spiritual life, and it's also true in the physical world we live in. You know, when you're driving, it's important to keep your eyes on the road. My dad, when we'd go on road trips, he would sometimes get distracted. He loved to hunt, and so if there were deer out in a field, inevitably he was looking off. And pretty soon the car started to drift off the road until my mom would, of course, scream, Hey, you're going to get us killed. Keep your eyes on the road. And then, of course, we'd veer back onto the road. And it's the same in our, in our walk with God. You know, if we're going to be running to him, don't let yourself be sidetracked by other things in life. Focus on him. Focus on him so you can pursue him, but also so you can be encouraged by his example. You know, he's the one who set a perfect example Especially when we're tired and we're alone, it's easy to grow weary. It's easy to just be done. But he did it. He was faithful. He pushed on. He completed it despite all the opposition. He ran the race set out before him. So you're not alone. Don't give up. There's a crowd of witnesses cheering you on. We're excited that you're following God. We're watching eagerly. And Jesus did it. So take heart, keep going, push on. God bless. I hope you have a great week.